the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. My dear learners, you are welcome to yet another segment of e-learning through the Ministry of Education. And today we are going to look at the topic, Moses sent out 12 spies. I remain your CRS teacher, Asebe David Dagjana. Now before then, my students, we tend to see that Moses was one of those leaders that God chose to lead his children, that is the Israelites, to the land of Canaan, that is the promised land. Now, you remember my students some weeks back, we discussed about how Moses was at the burning bush when God commissioned him to go back to the land of Egypt and bring out the Israelites that have cried before God to set them free from the hands of Pharaoh. And you remember how they passed through the Red Sea on dry ground. Now you tend to see that after they will have crossed the Red Sea, God instructed Moses to stretch back that his stick over the sea, and that was how everybody that followed Pharaoh and others were drawn in the Red, in the Red Sea. Now today we are going to look at how Moses chose 12 good spies representing each tribe of the Israelites. He sent them to the land of Canaan. And what we are there going to do there, my students, they were going to spy out the land. Now, who is a spy? Now, a spy is a person who secretly watches and examines the actions of some individuals or organizations and gathers information on them, usually to gain an advantage. Now you tend to see that a spy, the moment he's given that assignment, he has to be very, very careful. He has to secretly undertake that assignment so that he is not caught, because once he is caught, definitely they will do away with him so that he will not take any real record back to his people. So at the wilderness of Param, Moses was directed by God to send out 12 spies from each tribe of Israel to spy the land of Canaan or the promised land. Now you tend to see that Moses was not sending these spies on his own, but it was God that asked him to send these spies. And you remember the time of Abraham, my students, the Israelites were the descendants of Abraham. And God had already promised Abraham that he was going to bless him and that his descendants were going to be like the sun or the stars of the sky. So you tend to see that the crowd was large and Moses was leading them. Now, the spies were to find out whether the inhabitants of Canaan were weak or strong, few or many, whether the land was good or bad, and whether the people lived in camps or walled cities. Moses gathered the spies and instructed them to bring some fruits of the land. It was the season of ripe fruits. Now, my students, you tend to see that these spies were not just asked to go to the land or to go to the promised land on their own or anyhow, but they were given tons of reference. What we are they going to actually uh, examine or look at in the land of Canaan? Moses told them that when they go, let them look at the inhabitants. That means the people living there. How were they? Were they giants? Were they small? What about the land? Was it fertile? What about the fruits of the land? Now, after carrying out this assignment, my students, they were expected to report back to Moses. Now, my students, you can see Moses in front of these great men, these were the 12 spies Moses chose to send them to the land of Canaan to go and spy out the land. Now you can see how Moses 
was looking at them and was instructing them, telling them what to go and look at in the land of Canaan so that they will bring back the reports to him. Look at them, 12 of them, and look at Moses, trying to instruct them on what to do. Now, my students, you tend to see that these spies left for their mission or for their assignment, and they spent 40 days. You tend to see that it wasn't an easy job. 40 good days, it wasn't just easy. They returned with an ill report, giving the people the impression that they were militarily inferior to the people of Canaan. The descendants of Anak lived there, and they were huge in nature. Now, when these spies went, they carried out their assignment quite all right, but they came back with an ill report. What do I mean by ill report, my students? There was fear in them. What they saw really made them to be afraid. So by the time they came back, they didn't realize that the God that took them there will give them the grace to become victorious over the people of Canaan. But what did they do? They felt Moses should not dare take them to the land of Canaan because they felt militarily they cannot be able to face those people. Who were these Anak, my students? The Anak were people that were huge in nature. And my students, by the time you are fighting with somebody and you find out that that person is, is bigger than you, you can see his muscles, in fact, you dare not make an effort. But if you have the strength, you have the strategy, you can face, but that is not encouraging my student. You should be a peacemaker. So I tend to see that these spies, 10 of them, brought a report to Moses that no, they cannot face the people, that the people were huge. And they even described themselves that they were just like grasshoppers before these people. And what do we do with grasshoppers to my students? A grasshopper cannot beat you, cannot do anything. You can only march on them. So to them, they felt the Canaanites will only march on them. They don't have to even carry their weapons and start killing them. So there was that great fear in 10 of the spies. Out of the 12 spies, only Joshua and Caleb gave people hope of victory. And they described to the people the rich nature of the land. Caleb and Joshua rent their clothes because of the unbelief of the people in their report and in God. My students, you tend to see that by the time these 10 spies have given their reports, ill report, Caleb and Joshua relied on God because with God, nothing is impossible before God. They felt there is nothing God cannot do. So they relied solely on God. But those ten spies told Moses that he should dare not take them to the land of Egypt. And you tend to see that because of the way they did not believe God, God did not, was not happy with them. In fact, they could not even remember how God uh, brought them out of the land of Egypt. They walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. Who can do that, my student, if not God? They could not even remember when they were walking in the wilderness trying to reach the promised land. There was no food. God provided them manna. There was no water. God provided them water. In fact, they were even tired of eating manna, and they complained to Moses. Moses told God, and God sent quails like meat for them to change, just like some of you used to complain to mom and dad. Ah, we are tired of eating too all the time. Is there no rice in the market? So it tend to see that these Israelites told Moses that they were tired of eating manna. So let there be a change. God in his infinite mercy provided for them. And even at this time, instead of them to still trust in the living and powerful God, my students, they failed in this aspect. And they felt they were the ones to fight the war physically, not inviting God to help them. So at the end of it, they were not happy. And they told Moses that Moses should better take them back to Egypt. They even told Moses that he cannot even be the only one to lead them. If he refuses to take them back to Egypt, they can pick any other leader
to do that for them on them, I mean on their own, my students. So I tend to see that if you are doing anything on your own, feeling that you have arrived, if care is not taken, you will fall and you will not reach that expected goal. Now, my students, the report of the 10 spies who described the inhabitants of the land as giants and that the Israelites were just like grasshoppers and that demoralized the people and they told Moses and Aaron to better take them back to the land of Egypt. Taking them back to the land of Egypt, they said Moses would have led them there to eat their cucumber, to eat their garlic, to enjoy themselves. Why should he take them to the wilderness? to be killed by the sword. Now, having said that, my students, the people were not against Moses, but they were against God. Now, even in our days, my students, if we happen not to respect our spiritual leaders or secular leaders, it is God that has positioned them there. So we need to obey, obey them no matter what. So I tend to see that the Israelites were not rebelling against Moses, but against God, because it was God that instituted Moses to be their leader. Now, the people or the spies were asked to bring back fruits. So the fruits the spies brought from the land was a proof of their mission, but they were divided in their report about the people of the land. That is positive and negative. Two, we are positive, relying on God, while Ten were negative in their report because they felt they can face those people physically and seeing that the people were giants, they felt they cannot do it. So Moses, who believed in God, supported the report of Caleb and Joshua. Moses believed the report of Caleb and Joshua because he felt these people have told him the real thing. The people were giants, quite all right, but... They believe in God, and Moses equally believed in God that it is God that can fight the battle for us. So whatever we are facing, my students, it is only God that can bring us out of those predicaments. Never you look at the quantum or how big the problem is. Look at your God. Who is big? Who is your creator? Who can control whatever that comes your way? Don't look at the problems, my students. It is only God that can see us through. So my students, you can look at this picture. You can look at the fruits that these spies brought. You can see Moses. You can see the leaders who went as spies to the land of Canaan, reporting back to Moses that these fruits that they brought, it meant that they actually went to the land because they cannot get these things anywhere except in the land of Canaan. So bringing back these fruits was a proof for Moses to actually know that, yes, they did go to Egypt, and this is what they can present. Now, my students, as a result of the negative report, the Israelites revolted against Moses to take them back to Egypt so that they don't die by the sword. The anger of the Lord was kindled against them. God was bent on striking the Israelites with pestilence. But Moses and Aaron fell face down before the Lord, pleading for the Israelites. Moses was really a good leader. When the Israelites were rebelling against God, rebelling against God's servant, who was Moses and Aaron and other leaders, you tend to see that Moses instead of him to foil the situation, to make God to be angry, Moses, as usual, decided to intercede for the Israelites so that God will not send pestilence. And you tend to see that pestilence are, are terrible diseases that can befall them. And Moses, who was very accommodating, what did he do? 
he what? He interceded on behalf of the people. And himself and his brother Aaron, they even fell down flat on the ground for God to actually see how the death of their pleading on behalf of the Israelites. So that was what really happened, my students. Then, meanwhile, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, encouraged the people to put their trust in God, who will give them the land, which flows with milk and honey, instead of rebelling against him for fear of the Canaanites. Yet, the Israelites were ready to stone their leaders if they refused to return them back to Egypt. The Israelites, my students, were bent on actually making Moses to take them back to the land of Egypt. Look at the way they suffered in the land of Egypt. They cried unto God, and God raised Moses. But look at them now. They want to still go back because of fear, because they did not believe in God, because they did not trust in God. I tend to see that Moses, on his own part, encouraged them. Don't look at the, size of, the sizes of these people. Look at God. God can do it. These people were adamant, and they still told Moses that if he cannot take them back, they will choose another leader. And they were ready to even stone Moses to death. God was not happy with the way the Israelites behaved after spying the land of Canaan. Now, what happened, my students? God was not happy with the disbelief of the Israelites and vowed to strike them down with a plague, destroy them, and then bless Moses. But Moses told God that if the Egyptians should hear about the destruction of the Israelites, they would say, and I quote my students, the Lord was not able to bring these people into the land he promised them and off. So he slaughtered them in the wilderness. What a leader, my students. Moses reminded God that, God, if you happen to send plague or destroy these people in the wilderness, by the time the Egyptians hear about it, they will say, ah, their God promised he was going to take them to the land of Egypt, but he was not able. Is God not able to do all things, my students? Yes, he is able to do everything for us, no matter how big the problem is. But you tend to see that there are times we don't believe in God because of what? Of fear. If you are attacked by some enemies, instead of you to call upon the name of the Lord, fear will already take you away, and you just give yourself away, and you lack the hope, and at the end of it, you'll be killed, or something sinister will happen to you. So let us put our faith in God. Let us not be behave like the Israelites. And if you happen to hear of any report that there are people coming from one area or the other into your village or city, just be calm. Hold yourselves and pray to God. He is definitely going to intervene in any of our situations. So God was not happy at all with the Israelites. So what happened again, my students? Moses, as usual, interceded on behalf of the Israelites, and God pardoned them, but declared that those from 20 years and above who murmured will not see the land of Canaan. Moses, as usual, my students, continued to intercede on behalf of the Israelites. Paraventure, a friend is into trouble, my students. Don't look at it and say, uh-huh. You thank God that this thing has befallen that person. No. What you need to do, intercede for that person. And God will actually intervene. Moses interceded. God intervened. But he said he was still going to punish those people. So how did he punish them and students? Those that murmured from the age of 20 years upward were actually punished by God. And you tend to see that these people we are not able to see the promised land. So I tend to see that students, my students, we need to be what? To be obedient to our leaders. We need to encourage ourselves. We need to work as a team in order to reach the goal God has designed us for.
let us see the qualities of Moses and moral lessons, my students. So from all that we have discussed in summary, we tend to see that Moses was directed by God to send these spies. I told us earlier on that Moses did not do these things on his own. And how many spies did he send? Yes, 12 good spies. And how many days did they spend? Yes, in our discussion we said they spent 40 good days. And Moses gave them terms of reference, what they were supposed to go and look at and bring back the report. So they actually went. But what happened between the 12 spies, my students? Yes, you tend to see that they were divided into two. Ten, seeing the sizes of the people, they felt they cannot be able to face them. But among the 10 spies, I mean the 12 spies, my students, who were those two that relied on God? Yes, they were Caleb and Joshua. They relied on God, believing that God can always do it. And at the end of it, my students, what were the reactions of the Israelites? They were annoyed with Moses. They were ready to stone Moses. They were ready to choose any other leader that would take them where? That would take them back to the land of Egypt so that they would go and continue to eat their word, my students. They mentioned cucumber. They mentioned garlic. And what have you? What would those, terms, those things do to them, my students? Because of fear. They could not stand it. So we are encouraged to what? To intercede for one another. Even when God said he was going to destroy them, Moses, what did he do? He interceded on behalf of the Israelites. And what did he do? He reminded God that if you should kill them in the wilderness, by the time the Egyptians hear of it, they will say, ah, their God took them out, but he was not able to do what? to take them to that land he had already promised their ancestor. So my students, there is need for us to actually believe and trust in the living God. So Moses has a lot of qualities that we are supposed to learn from him. The qualities of Moses are moral lessons. Now let us take them quickly one after the other. Moses had total faith in God. Moses had faith in God always especially in difficult times and danger. Whenever they were in difficult times, you remember when they needed food, they needed water, even when the water was bitter, Moses prayed to God and God intervened. Interceding spirit, Moses had the interceding spirit. Moses interceded for the Israelites and they were pardoned by God. So we can actually intercede for one another, my students. If you can pray for the sick, for all travelers, for whoever that is in trouble, my students. Whether you know them or you don't know them, we need to intercede for one another. Another point, or oh, another quality of Moses was that Moses had an enduring and accommodating spirit. Moses endured all moments and revolt against him by the Israelites and he cared for their well-being. Even when they were saying they would stone him, what did he do, my students? Humanly, if I were the one, I would run away. But in the case of Moses, he didn't. He was with the Israelites, even in that difficult situation. Moses had complete love for God and the nation Israel. If you have God in you as a leader, as a parent, you know, you love your family, you love the people you are leading, even if you are a class rep, my student, you can be able to take care of your mates in times of needs. So my students, there is need for us to love, put God in our, in our hearts and should love the people we are leading. Moses was a courageous leader. He was not moved by any ill report against himself by the Israelites. When they said they would stone him, he was not moved. He was still there for them. So my students, from all that we have discussed, please, I have an assignment for you. And if you are asking any question or sending in your assignment, please, I will always remind us that we should not forget to tell me where you are calling from and your name. 
I would like to know where you are calling from and who you are. So, our first question is, discuss the mission of the 12 spies in the land of Canaan. Discuss the mission of the 12 spies in the land of Canaan. Two, state the reaction of the Israelites on the ill report they received from the spies. Three, discuss Moses' role on God's decision against the rebellion of the Israelites. I remain Mrs. Asebede Vindagjana. In case you want to contact me, my number is 080-7725-1542. Stay safe. Keep learning, my students, till we meet in our next class. And God bless you.